A discussion of the return of Christianity with the lovely Tom Holland begins with some dope quoting Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. It is a lovely poem. The sea of faith was once too at the full. I recommend highly, but one should, dope optional, understand Arnold had been an agnostic since his adolescence. So the poem could be satire or speaking of faith, a unifying faith of humanity, which it sure is. But the discussion begins with the usurpation of a poem that does not mention Christ, assuming that faith can only mean Christ, a Christian assumption of an ethic that seems to forgive us for our sins, which may be why, under its flag and cross, we blithely commit so many, as I guess he will forgive us our current genocide like all the other ones before. It is Christian civilization that colonized the world. Colonization almost always meant ethnic cleansing, at least. Therefore, Christianity, ethnic cleansing, and genocide are Christian moves. I know, I know, colonization is as hard to find as abortion in the Gospels, but there it is. Douglas Murray will paint colonization pastel and altruistic. I don't, and truly, it is not for him to say. The calling card that there is one God and he is ours is shared by Islam. It seems Judaism says there is only one, but he is only for us. Keep him girls do, but don't imagine telling Crazy Horse that all he holds dear is heresy is going to elicit his sense of fun. This is your foundation, O Western civilization. There are myriad excusings available. Oh, how convenient. Your, son, your sins were forgiven by your God. Lauren Boebert, that great intellectual, uh, quote, Israel and the United States are the only two countries given to their people by God. Your God. I don't know him. It is deeds are writ as writ are pathetic, petulant, and indefensible. The relentless, unchanging insistence of his truth will get you some terrorism. You do it too, whenever your deity is shaded. If you turn your books the right way up, there it all is. Facebook will fill at intervals with lefties protesting God is not mentioned in the magic papers, the de declaration of or the con. He is, Jefferson says, endowed by their creator. His apologists shimmy around by pointing out he didn't specify which creator, just theirs. One should admit, though, that it is the one God Thomas meant, not the multiples of Red Cloud. Yahweh and Allah are who he meant, who the sons of Abraham have invented as the creator of all things, but especially the favored humans, the paragon of animals, the masters of the universe made in his image. Again, I demur. Jefferson could not escape his relationship to Daddy upstairs, with whom he probably felt a special kinship. Read his stuff. I have a new theory that the old colonials, who were once so new, Greece might have colonized Sicily, but their gods didn't claim the land by divine right, which is what the colonials did. And even now there are still silly debates about East and West, who is best, which is inordinately important, one notices, to the West. <laughs> not to anyone else. I wonder why. I wonder in my theory how hard this is for people to do, to leave their ancestral lands and commandeer others and effortfully graft themselves to the new place. It has been done, of course. We call them nomads, grafting light. But that life is tough. It is honest and tough and somehow doesn't abuse the natural world as the colonials seem so keen to do. Holland's plea for Christianity and its inherent good effects do require me to think that Western civilization is good, and I don't. Ah, uh, he will always resort to comparison with Islam, which I guess he thinks as the East. Uh, parentheses, I'd not. It seems and is pretty Abrahamic, and parenthesis. And yes, I would compare the 7th Cal Cavalry to Boko Haram or the U.S. armed forces wherever they show up. The most moral army notion is just silly racism untrammeled. On a slight tangent, I believe the Arab conquerors refused to use guns when available to them, saying they were cowards' weapons. They are, if you study that kind of thing. But notice how mechanized warriors are never called terrorists. Terrorism is really defined by the distance you are from your enemy. 10,000 feet over Nagasaki, no terrorist. My theory is that colonials, because they have no other relationship to the land they inhabit than the, than the assumed one manifest destiny allows them, again Christianity, are delusional on the subject of country. 
which makes the fawning over Israel a field day for Freudians. The monstrous disconnect behind the great sense of emptiness I feel as a European in Santa Fe or Harrisburg. I do not belong here. I love being in those places. I love to visit them, but I do know that I am in somebody else's ancestral. The European who feels comfortable in the Americas has the soul of a colonial or thief. Which leads one neatly to ask the white American supporters of Zionism, are you packed and ready to go back where you belong to your colonial birthplace, to your, to your, to your um, ancestral land? Then there is a pathetic support for Ukraine being invaded by a neighbor with bigger bombs. Support because, I don't know, they look like us. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't apply in Israel. Neither war is necessary for the people's fighting to fight. They claim to wear big girl pants and could talk this through, but America's desperate need of a sense of self and identity born before and so repeating in genocide ensures Ukraine and Israel a steady supply of weapons. And the idiots in Ukraine and Israel have zero awareness that what, that, that is what they are killing and dying for, American identity. There was a treaty, an agreement hammered out between Russia and Ukraine in April 2022 uh, that would have ended hostilities. What, said the US and Boris Johnson, no NATO, no more Western hegemony, no more myth of axis of evil. Well, I am just going to cry and send the pint-sized fascist all the guns he wants. I will fight for freedom to the last Ukrainian. Oh, Sir Kia, what freedom is that, mate? The one enjoyed by the 1%? while the rest of us struggle again beneath their yoke until the means by which they climbed and clung to power fries the planet. It is hard to fathom the deep and desperate need of bloodshed craved by the self-crowned freest people ever. Of course, you need your God back. There can be no other proof through the night, but the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. You cannot be alive unless you are killing or righteous. See Deuteronomy. When a sad, old, very ordinary messianist gets his words wrong, my friends rush to defend his decency, the decency of Goebbels, and call his opponent the devil, using the very obsession they so love to hate to express their hate. Mr. Trump is very hateable, and would not be in the race, but that your magic papers, your constitution slash Bible allows a felon many times over to run when in most places he could not even vote. John Meacham, historian, speaks of his country as if it were the greatest experiment of history, messianic to a phrase with its unblemished patriarchs who wrote pretty dreck through which a a, a five-year-old Lakota could have driven a truck misquoting Matthew Arnold's left, right, and center. Sentence one, we Americans do not celebrate those who caused suffering and diminish the rights of humanity. Um, Columbus Day, Washington's birthday, is President's Day. It is staggering. You claim that all nations do this. They don't. It is a sad fact. It is, a, it is, staggering. The, it is staggering. The rest of the world has an ancestral claim. Some might want to invent a self as madly as America, but those wanters can find beds in mental hospitals or democracy will gently shove them to the margins sooner rather than later, but not here. Here he squeaks and dithers away, rummaging through that storehouse of bigotries, trying to be thoughts like his voters. One thing really seriously to bear in mind, the founding fathers, are not Moses. Even Moses was not Moses.